Hey, what's up guys? This is Bell Allen with Evolve Lab bringing you another Way Faster Wednesday. Today we're going to be looking at the repeat pattern tool creating this feature wall inside of a lobby. It'll look something like this right here. That's what we're going to be working on. Hope you guys enjoy this video and talk to you soon. All right, so now we're in Revit. What we want to do is create this really sweet feature wall in this lobby area and we're going to be using the repeat pattern tool to do that. So first off, what we need is we need a mask to host these adaptive components on to use the repeat pattern tool. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to the Masking and Site tab and go to Model in Place. I'm gonna go ahead and call this a feature wall. Say okay. And then I'm gonna go ahead and start sketching on top of here. Now before I go any further, what's helpful sometimes is to actually have a work plane to draw on. So actually let's go ahead and set that work plane first. And you can use this little show uh, work plane button and it'll actually highlight your work plane that you have active. So if I say show, you see that that blue wall is, uh, is our reference work plane. All right, so now I'm gonna go ahead and start the reference line tool and I'm gonna enable 3D snapping in the chain. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and just start, what I wanna do is kind of like pick outside of here. I'm, I'm drawing more or less the profile for this feature wall. And as I place these points off in space, you can see them here. All right, let's just make sure, yep, we're oriented really good there. All right, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to um, set my work plane to the floor plan and navigate to the top. And I'm actually going to then copy this guy over to the left. And maybe we'll create a few of these, maybe like four of them. And what's really helps with this design is uh, if you kind of can invert some of these next to the ones that are uh, adjacent to, to each other. And let's just turn this off for now. And what I'm doing too, so you know, I'm using the uh, shift middle mouse button and that's allowing me to uh, kind of orbit in space there. All right, so then what I can do is I can go and I can just kind of start pushing and pulling some of these points here. So I can pull this one out this direction. I can grab this point. Maybe I'm gonna pull this one up a bit. I can pull this one down, something like that. And we'll have some freedom to, to edit these later, I'll show you. All right, so then what I'll do is I'm gonna grab all four of these guys and I'm gonna say create form. And that way we get this, this kind of mass form here. And then what I need to do is I need to divide that surface. See that? So you use the divide surface tool. And then what we need to do is two things. We need to make sure one, that we have the proper spacing all the way across here. Usually what I do is I'll um, set this guy to one and then maybe we'll bump this one up to maybe like 55 or something like that. Oop, those are inverted. So this one will be 55, this one will be one. You can also do fixed spacing. Um, that might be even better for from like a buildability kind of standpoint. I'm gonna bump this up even more just because what we want to try to do is get some of that density with this feature wall. I have one of these guys that's just inside this wall a little bit. Let's see if I can grab that. You can use this isolate tool, isolate element, and we should be able to grab that point. Maybe, let's see. Maybe I'll do a, a window select just to get that thing. I wanna to try to get that out of that wall there so it's easier to, to see the geometry. There we go. And then, Grab this guy and just kind of pull him out. There. Don't want to change its orientation. Got to make sure you that we just move it upon this green right there. We'll just move it out of that wall right there. We go. All right, that should be better. There we go. Now we can see all those butamous lines. All right, so now we have our. Um, kind of our form that our adaptive components can be hosted to. Let's pull that in, make this a little more interesting. Maybe down. Something like that, that looks cool. 
All right, so now what we're going to do is we're going to do a new uh, adaptive component. So go to the File tab, New Family. And we're going to go Imperial Generic Model Adaptive. And so we have five points in here. One, two, three, four, five. So what we need to do is we need to create a five point adaptive component. So we're going to use the reference line and enable 3D snapping in here as well. And we're just going to click five points. All right. So one, two, three, four, five. All right. And then I'm going to grab these guys and I'm going to say make adaptive. So I say make adaptive on this and you can see now I'm going to go ahead and uh, actually let's leave this for just a moment. I'll show you how this will interact. So we'll say set work plane to this first one and then we'll draw a profile for that wall on that first point right in here. So if I click on this guy and then turn off 3D snapping, we could even make this parametric if we want. Maybe we'll do a, a separate video for that. But I usually kind of like something a little skinnier uh, maybe like a two foot by eight inch, or excuse me, two inch by eight inch profile. And we'll grab that profile and this reference line and we'll say create form. And you can see there, we now have this geometry. And what's cool about this is if we grab, it's always kind of tricky grabbing these things. Let's see, and always zooming in doesn't ever seem to help me either. There we go. You can see the profile the geometry goes along for the ride and that's what we want we want this geometry to move along for the ride all right so now the other thing we have to do that's really important with this family is we have to set its orientation now you get different orientations for these points um, based on your properties here so orients to so you select all the points and then go to the orients to parameter and for this example, this study, let's do global Z then host X, Y. And you'll see in the project how that'll host. It'll, it'll really work the way that we want it to and, and the way it's intended to. All right. Now, if you're proper, you should save this. We'll do a save as family and just name it something other than family one. Um, I'm just going to call this uh, five point adaptive component component and save that guy and then we're going to go ahead and load that into our project here so in here you got to pick on this surface you have to say turn on those nodes this guy nodes this guy be nice if uh you could do all of these in one step but we'll do it this way turn on nodes there we go um and so now we have these points that are there. Okay, so now that we have our adaptive component loaded into our project, what we're gonna do is go ahead and place that component. And we're just gonna pick on this point, that point, that point, that point, and that point. All right, now what we could do if we wanted is we could go through and we could then, you know, create another component and drop in another one, every single one of these locations, but that would not be very efficient. Um, so I think it was 2015, maybe that Autodesk introduced this uh, repeat pattern tool, maybe actually a lot earlier than that. I think it was like, man, probably 2011, 2012. But um, I used it on this undulating beam system project that I was working on, and it was just super helpful. So what you can do is you can click on the adaptive component and use this repeat pattern tool. So if you click on that, what it'll do is it'll apply that adaptive component all the way across our geometry. See that? And look how freaking cool that looks. Okay, now if I wanted to, what I could do is tab through and get that mass in, that's that's behind here. And I could say, show me the, the, the x-ray of that. And they have these points in here and you can actually then start to take these different points and start to manipulate them in different directions and see your your mass update uh, in real time. So your mass will update and then your adaptive components will follow suit, see that? And so that's super helpful um, from an efficiency standpoint, this repeat uh, adaptive component patterning tool. Um, yeah, so I hope that's really helpful for you guys. Uh, again, this is Way Faster Wednesday with Evolve Lab. If you enjoyed this, please subscribe and we'll talk to you guys soon, thanks.